we're going to see how this goes. Haha! -ha! Welcome! Welcome everyone to another episode of the Sunday Scaries. Hopefully it's working this time. Um, so, I went through a few different games trying to figure out what to play tonight. Most of them failed. I tried to get um, American Miggy's Alice again, wouldn't launch. Tried to do Eternal Darkness, that wouldn't launch. So we're moving on to a very exciting one here. One that uh, was recommended to me by Hana Pengu uh, that, uh, that they enjoy playing on stream a lot and I've enjoyed watching. Uh, so this is Scarlet Hollow, but before I begin, I just need to see if this little guy will show up on camera. Cause this is, oh no, no sir, that's my headphone. You don't get to bite that one. That one is off limits to kitties. No, no. All right, this is infinitely more interesting than anything I'm doing. So we're gonna keep the camera up. Merlin, no. Merlin, Mer no. Merlin, no. Stab it. I will put you out of this room if I have to. And everyone will be sad about it, especially the audience. No. You're gonna be good? You're gonna settle down? You're not gonna settle down. I can tell. Alright. We know what happens to kitties who don't settle down. They get scooped. Come here. What? Ooh. Sorry, bud. Didn't mean to do that to you. Sorry. <laughs> no? No, you can't do that either. Ugh. Mer Merlin? You're just acting up because mom's not here and because there's a piece of wire that you don't get to eat. And I get it, and I'm sorry, but... We can't do that right now, pal. I'm gonna have to put you down. I'm sorry, buddy. But this is the way it's gotta be. We're going down. Whoop. Well, I've made an end. Much better. Okay, here we go. Now it should be picking up the mic. Oh, hello, Tapal. Uh, yeah, no, what had happened was that um, uh, a feline interference happened. So, and I'm sure you can watch on the on the earlier part of the stream when it comes up in the VOD. Uh, Merwin got very enamored with my headphone cord and would not let it go. So I had to put him out of the room. So sadly, the most interesting person on the stream is already gone, but I guess first and yeah, whatever. Uh, I don't like that. Anyway, so yeah, this is exciting. It's my first time playing Scarlet Hollow. I've watched Han and Pengu play it a bunch of times. So uh, this will be an interesting experience. We'll see how much I remember, which is probably not much. I also don't know what build I'm going to go for. We'll, we'll find out. Uh, your name is... 
consistency and also because I'm not imaginative. Uh, you live in the city of... Ooh, 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 ooh. What's a good spooky city? Um, hmm. Pine's Hollow was the name of the LARP I was going to write that was going to be similar to this, but it's too similar to Scarlet Hollow. Um, all right, let's do a Night in the Woods reference. Same from Possum Springs. All right, here we go. Pronouns. I'm going to do he, him for simplicity's sake. Oh, I like the star one. That's, that's good. All right, so these are my choices. Keen eye, book smart, hot, street smart, talk to animals, mystical. Hmm, okay. Traits unlock additional paths and dialogue options. Okay, so there's a lot of reasons to play through multiple times. Um, I feel like Keen Eye is a good one for getting started because it'll help me notice things that I might not notice otherwise. That's what I'm going to do. Oh, two paths. Ooh, well, hang on. I may do I may do keen eye and talk to animals. This sounds good. Yeah, I absolutely understand why you have five separate playthroughs now, Hanapengu. There's so combinatorics in action, there's so many. Um Okay. So let's throw it to hmm. Hang on. Yeah, no, because it, it was so fun when you were talking to animals on your playthrough, so I kinda wanna do the same. Okay. You jolt awake as the bus hits a particularly nasty bump. You feel like you'd only just managed to start drifting off, and now here you are, awake again and still exhausted. Man, those patterns on the bus seats take me back, I will say. For a moment, you're hazy on the details of where exactly here is, confusing this bus with the many others that came before it. But as your mind continues to reassert its existence in the waking world, the past few days come back into focus. Oh, a key trait for each chapter. That's interesting. All right, cool, cool. Uh, all right, so back to the back to the text. The long lost cousin, the bad news, the 26 hours of bus rides with countless late night stops and seedy depots that felt unsafe even in the middle of the day. You wouldn't normally find yourself traveling like this, but your cousin bought the tickets. The funeral of Perlan Scarlet, your cousin's mother, your aunt, seemed like something that you shouldn't ignore even considering your own late mother's rocky relationship with this side of the family. Fortunately, the end of your long journey is in sight. You're almost in Scarlet Hollow. Roll credits. Um, let's see here. So anyway, as I was saying... Oh no, he's still here. He's been sitting next to you for the past five hours talking at you without pause. You're not sure he even stopped when you started to doze off. At first you thought he was just being friendly, but that was several hours of one-sided conversation ago. Oof. Man, that light is bright. Can I do something about that? Not really. Okay. Here's what it is. Ugh. I was up in Maryland looking for work, but mostly messing around because I was a dumb teen. Me and my buddies were doing our usual prank stuff. You know, pushing joggers into the harbor, that sort of thing. Someone could die, sir. That's not a prank. That's just murder. My options include, wait, what? Dude, what's wrong with you? Hell yeah, that sounds awesome. Why are you talking to me? Oh, if I thought why are you talking to me would actually dissuade him. No, I'm going to do the right thing, and I'm going to actually check somebody on their toxic bullshit behavior and say, dude, what's wrong with you? Dude, what's wrong with you? Pushing joggers into the harbor? That's awful. What if they drowned? Yeah, what if they, like, what if they hit their head on the way down? <laughs> yeah, I was just, I was such a shithead back then. I'm still a little bit of a shithead, but hey, nobody's nerfed, am I right? 
So this girl comes up to us, swinging her purse, yelling about how she was going to call the cops or whatever. It was, it was hilarious, bro. She actually hit my friend, and he said it hurt a lot. So I guess she really was mad, not just playing. But she kept swinging, and soon enough she lost her balance and fell into the harbor all on her own. We didn't even have to push her. We had a good laugh and fished her out. Her phone got soaked, so she couldn't call the cops on us. We wound up hanging out all day. I would not hang out with the person who did that to me, but hey, here we are. She kind of became my girlfriend after that, and we've been on and off for about a year, so it's pretty serious. Slow blank meme. Um, though about five months ago, she tried to break up with me, like, for real, and jeez, you ever just get so mad that you just want to, like, kill somebody? I kind of feel like killing someone right now. <laughs> I never feel that way. No, yeah, all the time. I like seriously what the hell is wrong with you. <laughs> just double it down. Just, nope. That's fucked up and so are you. Why are you telling me this? I have never felt that way about another person and I find it alarming that you have. What the hell is wrong with you? Eh, you're young. You'll get it when somebody tries to break your heart one day. It changes a person. Makes them think things they never thought they could. <laughs> I honestly could have killed that woman. Creepy violins thing music in the background. Anyway, she's giving birth to our son right now, so I'm trying to get up to Virginia to be there for it. So, she's nine months into a pregnancy. And... Five months ago, when she was four months into that pregnancy, she tried to break up with you? And you wanted to kill her? I, you, I didn't think you wanted me to do the math on that one. Alright. Uh, but I don't know if I'm like into that stuff, so I might just wind up on a bus to New York or something instead. I always wanted to go there. Ah, oh, that gives me the option, do you love her enough to make this work? You're a monster is, is on brand for what I've been going with, but, uh... There is no, uh, I hope you... I hope you don't look when you cross the street. Oh well. Yeah, hey, hey maybe, uh, maybe go down to Red Hook and have somebody push you into the, uh, off the dock, pal. <laughs> Hana Pango, I'm sorry that you had not done the math on that. I noticed that in your playthrough. I was like, hey, wait a second. Um, you were so worked up by the thought of losing her that you wanted to kill her, but now she's giving birth to a child you created together, and you're planning on running off? Even if you love her, think about whether that love is strong enough that you'd be able to handle raising a kid together. Hey, stop looking at your damn phone. I'm talking at you. Think about how your actions are going to impact his life and whether removing yourself would be better for him in the long run. <laughs> yeah, good stuff to think about. Anyway, where'd you say you were headed? I didn't. No need to be nasty, I was just asking. Not like I'm gonna follow you off the bus or anything. I didn't think you would before, but now that you say that, I'm worried. <laughs> so, if you aren't getting off at my stop, then you must be headed to Scarlet Hollow, right? Or the holler, as they call it in these parts. Uh, oh yeah, so the, the math is they've been dating for a year. Nine months ago, she got pregnant. Five months ago, he wanted to, like, she wanted to break up with him, and he wanted to kill her. And here they are. So. <laughs> it is a whole extra level of horrifying Hanapengu, you are correct. Um, but anyway, that's the only other stop until this bus turns around. I ride it pretty often, so I know. Almost nobody ever goes up that way. Though, come to think of it... I had a couple of buddies who went up there to work in the mine. There's a coal mine up in the hollow, you see? There's always a job listing or two on the boards around there. Wow. I never wanted to do that kind of thing myself. I like my lungs the way they are, thanks, but my buddies got desperate enough to try it. <coughs> I 
think I'm getting the black lung paw. I haven't heard from them in a while, though, now that I think about it. We should see if they're on Facebook. See how they're doing up there. <laughs> I hope they didn't die. Oh, you gotta laugh, right? He looks back at his phone, for once focused on something other than you. Oh, this one's me. It was lovely meeting you. I hope you don't get too bored without me around to talk to. Don't let the door hit you where the good lord splits you. Get out of here. Here, I have something for you. The stranger rifles through his pack before presenting you with a dripping bag of peanuts. They're boiled peanuts. I got them at a gas station a few buses back. I noticed you haven't eaten much, so I figured you could use them more than me. Plus, they dripped all over my bag, so I don't want to carry them anymore. Tip. Sometimes picking a dialogue option establishes new facts about who you are. <laughs> Screw you and your peanuts. I like that. Uh... I don't want them. They're so hard to get rid of. You can't just throw them in the trash later. So there's no point in being polite. I'm just going to say no thanks. You put your hand up to say no. I'm not really hungry. There's still a good 45 minutes left in your journey, pal. Assuming nothing goes wrong. Best to have them on hand. Well, no thanks is valid, Hanapengu, but unfortunately it is not sufficient. The young man sets the peanuts down on the empty seat next to him. The juices dribble out through the bottom of the bag and into the upholstery, instantly soaking in a peanut brine. Disgusting. And with that, I leave you. Safe travels, friend. Yeah, have a nice life being a dad that you... Oh, jeez. Oh, Man, good luck with that kid and his therapy sessions, eventually. And just like that, you're alone. The stranger's peanuts soaking into the seat across from you. Maybe you can finally get some sleep. Next stop, Scarlet Hollow, end of the line. Almost there. This is the second game that I've done on Sunday Scaries that starts with a transit ride in black and white into a location. The first being Mundane, so that's just kind of amusing. Anyway, the bus finally comes to a stop, its brakes squealing as it deposits you in front of the Scarlet Hollow bus station. The sign, at least, reads, And in that one, you're going to the funeral of a relative as well, kind of. Huh. Solid premise for a horror game. Anyway. Uh, the sign, at least, reads bus station, but calling it that feels disingenuous. At best, it's a kiosk. Though for a small town like this, you're amazed there's so much as a road, let alone a bus that drives on it every week. The driver quickly shuts the doors behind you and starts the engine, kicking up dust clouds as he pulls away, eager to leave you and this place behind. Hey, Johnny. You instantly recognize the warned young woman from the few public photos on her Facebook page. She's your cousin Tabitha, and she looks annoyed to be here. <laughs> I like looks like somebody needs a hug. I am so sorry for your loss. Come here, cuz. Bring it in. You go in for a hug. She tries to pull away, but it's too late. You squeeze tightly, your cousin squirming in your grip. Okay, okay. Enough! She pulls away from you, dusting off her clothes. Something you should know about me is that I'm not really a hugger. <gasps> it's never too late to learn as a... Wild response to someone saying they're not a hugger. Um, but no, I'm going to go with I thought you might want some comfort considering. Sorry, I just thought you might like some comfort considering... I don't. Now, come on, let's go. I don't want to spend any more time down here than I have to. Your cousin turns and motions to an old BMW parked near the bus kiosk. You follow her, clambering into the dusty relic. It doesn't take much driving before the only signs of civilization are the car you're in and the road you're on. Tabitha maintains an icy silence as she focuses on the road. God, what is the, um, what is the ministry quote? Where you come from is gone. Where you're going to weren't never there. And where you are don't mean a damn thing unless you can get away from it. Sorry, 
Anyway. Uh, dialog options labeled explore can usually be taken without advancing the story. They can impact relationships and unlock additional story paths, so choose carefully. These would be the left side of the conversation wheel in Mass Effect, I believe. Ooh, that's rough. Uh, let's see here. I'll go with I can't believe we never actually met before this. That's a good starter. Can't believe we've never actually met before this. You have your mom to thank for that. Or had, I guess. Uh, I'll go with the... Yeah, I, don't, I don't know why my mom left or what kind of grudge she had against the side of the family, but I'm sorry. I wish I'd known about you. Whatever. What's done is done. Hmm. I'm going to try something light-wise. I'll be right back. I mean, it's not much better, but at least I'm not like a supernova now, so that's something. Getting a light balance for a spooky setting is very difficult, as it turns out, at least in this room. Anyway, uh, yeah, so whatever what's done is done. Uh, so let's go to... How you holding up? Fine. Oh, my keen eye tells me that she's tense. Really? Didn't figure that one out. <laughs> Are you sure you're all right? You seem tense. You know you can talk to me, right? I went through something similar when my own mom passed. She tenses up even more at the mention of your mom before letting out a heavy sigh. Maybe it's a sore spot for her. You quickly apologize. I'm sorry, I know that's probably not what you're looking to hear right now. Look, I appreciate your concern, but I'm fine, really. So this does awkwardly segue into the awkward line about the Dead Moms Club now. So I guess we're both members of the Dead Moms Club now, huh? Your cousin turns to stare at you with an icy hatred in her eyes. Maybe this would have worked to ease the tension if she were someone else, but she isn't. She turns back to the road, her expression cold and unforgiving. Alright. Last one. Oh. Hello, pest. You're not allowed to bite the headphone cord anymore. Okay, so the funeral. It's on Sunday, right? Yep, like I told you. Uh, yeah, Hana Pengu, I get that I can skip explore options, but I didn't know whether or not I should yet. So, thank you for the the, the information. But, um, geez, that's almost the whole week. Okay, so that's petulance. That assumes... They both kind of assume... I'll offer to help. That's better than the other one. Do you need any help planning? If you ever need help with errands or scheduling, feel free to ask. I know this stuff isn't easy. It's actually been fine. I just needed the coffin and somebody to dig a hole. You decide to sit in silence with your cousin as the car eases up the steep mountain road. Oh man, which one is in worse shape, the Scarlet Estate or the Finch Estate? All right. All right. And here it is, the Scarlet Estate. Though it's seen, it's seen better days, its crumbling elegance is not lost on you. Someone who used to, um, someone used to the cramped apartments in gray cities. There we go. Didn't quite get all of that line, but. 
Your mother told you about this place many times before she passed, always with an anger burning beneath her words. God, it's like my dad talking about when he grew up. They didn't have this kind of luxury, though. Um, the faded majesty you once imagined doesn't quite compare with what's in front of you, a jarring blend of opulence and ruin. As you stare at it perched on the crumbling cliffside, you can't help but feel like it's something that should have been left to rot a long, long time ago. You're hit with a blast of dusty air as you step across the threshold and into the foyer. Everything in this room has been here for much longer than you've been alive, each object cemented in place with layers of dust and cobwebs. You can hear doors creak on their hinges and the aches and moans of ancient floorboards as the house itself sways in the wind. Welcome to our family's humble estate. Unfortunately, due to the current state of the house, only a few rooms will be safely accessible during your stay. I wouldn't go wandering anywhere else if you value your limbs. The floors have been known to give out. Oh, it's just like sweet home. You've got to carry planks with you wherever you go. If you know what's good for you, you'll stick to your room and your bathroom and the kitchen. And the hallways, I guess. But only the hallways you need to use to get to those places. I'll show you around so you know where it's safe to walk. You can leave your bags here for the time being. <laughs> I like how it's beautiful and lie it's beautiful are both options next to each other. I'll go with so you, so you live here? Yeah, and I'm letting you stay here for free, so mind your manners. Or did your mother not teach you about those? Let's just get the tour over with. Follow me. You put your bags down and follow Tabitha through a long, dusty hallway. She delicately steps over holes and tears in the floor, and you do your best to trace her steps. I need to make sure Merlin's not eating something he shouldn't. One moment. Nah, he's good. Okay. Um, kitchen. On Wednesdays, a woman from town comes in and does the cleaning. Her name's Janie. I wouldn't recommend socializing with her. She'll talk your ear off. If you need any food, there's fixings for peanut butter and jelly. Oh, I commented on this on the Hanna Pengu stream. I was like, fixings for peanut butter and jelly. So that would be peanut butter and jelly. And presumably, like, bread and two knives. Don't touch my mac and cheese or my ice cream. Those are off limits. Oh, and you can also access the garden through here, but it's pretty wild, so I wouldn't if I were you. Tip. Some explore options prevent you from taking others. Choose carefully. Someone cleans this place may not be bad. I love PB&J is fine. If there's somewhere in town to buy food is probably a good idea. Now let's be positive. Awesome, I love PB&J. How'd you know it was one of my favorites? That smile can't be real. I didn't, but good for you. Love that for you. Um... I do like, what if I want ice cream? What if I want ice cream? Then you can buy some yourself at the general store. If you touch my stash, I will know, and there will be consequences. <laughs> that sounds like a luxury I cannot afford. Accurate. Uh, I don't know if I should be spending my money on ice cream right now. Maybe you can't have ice cream. That's how it works. I guess I can ask about someone cleans this place. Someone clean. Someone cleans this place? Why do you ask? 
not up to your sparkling city standards. Out here in the country, we know how to put up a little dirt and grime. And cats on the counter and dead flowers and a pile of dishes in the sink and I mean, you name it. More, more than anything, the pile of dishes in the sink is what's giving me anxiety, but that's a me thing. All right, what's next? Bathroom, follow me. Great, it's been, it's been hours since I've gone oversharing. Not my style, but okay. As the two of you leave the kitchen, you pass by a tuxedo cat sitting on the countertop. Approach the cat. No. Don't try to pet Fru-Fru. If she wants to be pet, she'll let you know. Ne me parle pas. Say ne me parle pas. There we go. Yeah, I did notice it was weird for your quiet character as well, Hanapengu. Um. I'm sorry, little lady. Je ne parle pas, uh, je ne parle pas français. There we go. Of course. How typically is okay. All right. All right. Got to remember the one French student I took a class with in school and how she sounded. This will be terrible, but I'll do my best. Of course. How, how typically American. I shall debase myself by speaking your tongue but only so that I might insult you directly to your face, you uncultured swine. There we go. Ha ha, very funny. Her name sounds French. Stop wasting my time and let's finish the tour. <gasps> Hanapengu, next session I will invite you to guest star and that will be very good. Because I, I don't want to interrupt it right now. I, maybe... I think I have to stop and start stream to do that, and I don't want to do that right now. So, next time we'll be prepared. You once again follow Tabitha through a long, dusty hallway. Maybe after a few nights it'll get easier to navigate these spaces, but for the time being, you feel lucky to have not fallen through the floors. And I enjoy your animal voices. They're very good. Uh, anyway. Uh, guest bathroom. Not much to show. It's a bathroom. I'll wait outside. Do what you must, if you must. Oh, well, if I don't have... Hmm, hang on. If we can throw this to BRB... Which I will do in a moment, because my mic isn't live on BRB. But I'm going to do that, so hang on, folks.
We're trying, folks. We're almost there. Coming up. Very soon. I can see the screen. I can see me and my camera. I can hope that my mic is on. There's there's an option here. Hang on. Well, I really didn't have to assess why I'm robot. Um, try going back to the page and see what happens. Back to the page. I need to move Hang here. on. Hang on. Um, We're getting there. Not yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure this is, uh, hmm. Hang on. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, so it's it should be giving me a separate audio to mute in OBS now, if I can find it. Is it that one? No, it's not that one. It's not that one. Where is it? I can see you. I can see your screen. I can see your screen, but I can still can not hear you. But that's fine. Hang on, let me see here. Okay, come in. Carl. Come in. Carl. Come in. Carl. Come in. If I drop this one down, do we still hear you in desktop audio? Seems like it. Say something now. I can see you talking. It's less echoey now, so that's something. But you can't hear me now? Hmm.
Okay, but where's the option to... Mm -hmm. Hang on. Does this bring up the guest star menu again? Good. Well, what do you know? There was a thing for saying that there was an audio echo problem when I tried to cancel the call. And it's like, hey, what was wrong with your call? It was that thing. Anyway, we tried our best. It didn't work out. So now we're back to the thing from before. And we'll get it next time, maybe. Hopefully. Possibly. Who can say? But I would say... Let's not try another guest star session tonight, unfortunately. Next time. Uh, that's, Tapal makes a good point. Internet woes could still be woeful, but it could be any number of things. So we'll see. Anyway. Uh, we're back at this wretched bathroom. So, interesting place to stop. Um, so, it is a wretched bathroom. Piles of junk sit untouched in the corners of the room, and mystery stains paint the floor. Who exactly uses this bathroom? Guests. I don't want to be rude and say it's the worst bathroom I've ever seen. Also, it's not the worst bathroom I've ever seen. Um, are you sure this toilet works? I mean, that's a valid question to ask. Hang on. <laughs> I will imagine it when it comes up. Hana Pengu. Um, yes, why wouldn't it? The water bills get paid, therefore the toilet works. Now do your business so we can move on. Um, You silently stare at the monumental task in front of you. Here we go. Lift toilet seat. Scram, fellas! The jig is up! Bugs skitter from the bowl as you lift the seat. No, I mean, in for a penny, in for a pound. We're gonna do it here. A toilet is a toilet. Sure, it could be cleaner, but your business needs doing, and this is as good a place as any. You do what you must and rejoin your cousin out in the hall. Did you wash your hands? I'm tired of having to say this to horror game protagonists. Wash your hands. Next up, guest bedroom. Last stop on the tour. Follow me. You and Tabitha briefly return to the foyer before climbing the stairs and reaching the guest room. The room smells old. Dust, mildew, wood rot. It has it all. A week of sleeping in this place might give you permanent lung damage. God, I should upload the emoji that you made. I, I, I forget if I have it in three sizes or not, but that's a thing to do in between weeks. But yes, that, that emote is quality, Hanapengu. This is where you'll be staying. The linens are fresh. I had Janie wash them last week. And to endure a half-hour rant from the, uh, about her kid to... Uh, sorry. I had to endure a half-hour rant about her kid to get her to do it, so you better be grateful. Hang on a second, folks. Okay, sorry about that. Just missed a, a DM from Hanapengu. It would have been helpful to see at the time, but here's how it goes, you know. The closet is full of old family stuff, so you can't hang your clothes up, but you can use the dresser. It should be empty. Look at that nice roll-top secretary they have, though. Hello. It takes a keen eye to say what's with all the boxes, folks. What's with all the boxes? Old family stuff. <laughs> Isn't it lovely to Indeed, Tapao. 
Um, do you need any help moving them? Tabitha eyes you up and down for a moment. No. Who used to sleep here? When? This house is almost 150 years old. Many, many people have slept here. And now you'll sleep here, carrying on the fine tradition of bedrooms being slept in. Well, I was dripping with sarcasm on this one. I mean, it seems a little dusty is about as mean as I want to go. It seems a little... You spend a moment searching for the right word. Dusty. Wow, sorry I'm not giving you the five-star hotel treatment you so desperately seem to need. You can dust it yourself if you care so much. I mean, there was a broom right there. You can always sweep. I guess I'll start to get settled. Follow me, I'll take you back to the foyer so you can collect your belongings. This concludes our tour. I'm afraid I must return to my duties, so you'll have to entertain yourself for the rest of the day. Don't expect to see much of me. Tip, some dialogue options will open additional conversation paths, some right away and others down the line. There was bad blood between our moms, but there doesn't have to be between us. I mean, is that even a keen eye thing? I don't know, but I'm gonna say it anyway, because it's available. I don't know what happened when my mom left, but that has nothing to do with me. You asked me to come here, but you're getting all pissed off that I actually came. Can we just start fresh, now that it's just us? <clears throat> okay, I'm sorry I've been test no, excuse me, testy since you've gotten here. You've been an acceptable guest. I'm just under a lot of pressure right now. Please, just stay out of my hair until later, okay? I have work to do. Rude, whiny, maybe okay. That seems polite to ask. What kind of work do you do? I run the coal mine, same as every Scarlet who came before me. Except for you and your mom. It requires a lot of time and concentration, so I'd appreciate it if you didn't keep me for long. I mean, there's not a really an option that says I rankle at the notion of you being the owner of a coal mine, but we're going to go with I didn't know we owned a coal mine. I didn't know we owned a coal mine. We don't own the coal mine. I own the coal mine. Your side of the family forfeited any claim to it years ago. Can I come watch? What? No! The mine is dangerous. I can't babysit you and do my job. Hashtag girl boss. <laughs> Pound sand. All right, here we go. Dude, that's kind of sad. Don't you ever think about the things you could be doing with your life that might give you a better sense of purpose than running a coal mine? Not the tack I would take, self. But okay. Some of us don't have that luxury of choice, Johnny. Some of us had to stick around to keep the family business from crumbling, to keep this town from crumbling. Wow. Wow. I'm from Possum Springs, lady. I know all about people having to stick around to keep the family business from crumbling and also having to work a mine to keep the town from crumbling. Funny story. Check out Night in the Woods. Um. Some of us had to temper our expectations for how our lives were going to go. Yes, and some of us are named Beatrice Santello. Um. Anyway. There's a simple satisfaction to getting a task done, and that's all I need. Do whatever it is you want to do while I'm gone. Just don't do anything dumb or dangerous. Not while I'm responsible for you. Rude, rude. That was nice. Alright, I won't keep you, but we should hang out when you get back. We'll see. That's a, There's a lot that needs to get done this week. Your cousin leaves through the front door. And now it's just you. You and this sprawling, decrepit estate. Meh. 
might well get that sandwich. You haven't had anything to eat all day. The only things louder than your stomach right now are the creaks and the moans of this ancient place. A peanut butter and jelly sandwich sounds like exactly what you want and what you need to take on the rest of the day. You head to the kitchen. You're back in the kitchen, ready to craft a beautiful peanut butter and jelly sandwich. It's a daunting task given the state of the place, but the aggressive growls of your stomach outweigh your fear of food poisoning. To get started, you'll probably need to find some peanut butter, some jelly, bread, a plate, and a knife. I mean, like, of those, the plate is the least required. You can, if you have paper towels, then you're probably fine. But, oh, hello, cat. There's a cat on screen, too, right now. Hang on. We may have another guest star. Difficult to say. Will Merlin come up? We don't know. Merlin seems disinterested in coming up right now. Oh, and we'll, we'll see about that. Hang on. The only thing is, can he come up and not attack my headphone cable? Oh, he's up. He's over here. Let's throw it over to intermission. Because we know what the people are really here for, don't we, Merlin? Yeah, there's our boy. Yeah, you're just gonna chill? This is about to go real bad, folks. I think Merlin just spied the headphone cord. It's true, this is the most Merlin has been on camera yet. He's normally as camera shy as he is regular shy. Yeah, that's you, bud. But you're on my mouse, so I can't really play until you move. Oh, he's purring a lot, folks. I don't know if you can hear it. All right, pal. What's it going to be? All right, we're going to try and move the camera. I'm going to lean into this cat cam thing. Sorry, bud. <laughs> There's a face. There's a face. I'd, I'd say that I'd cut this out of the VOD, but I should separate it and make it its own VOD. And then that would be the one everybody would watch. Because you're so cute, Merlin. All glory to the hypno cat. It's true. He's going to ch cast Mass Charm Person on all of you. Because he's a little wizard. And 
No, I, it's just called a mouse. It's not an actual mouse, Merlin. Oh. See, now he sees the headphone cord. Now the question is, does he go into my lap or does he attack? Or does he just take a bath? I guess that works too, bud. See, part of me wants to just kind of shoo him off of here, but I know that Jen would be mad if I did that, so. Can't do anything mean to our boy. Her little guy. <laughs> All right, bud. Oh, I'm Hannah Pingo. I'm about to gently pick him up and move him. It's about to be that time. Just waiting till he finishes this round of licking himself, by which I mean cleaning himself. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, like, I don't know a lot about how cats work. I know a little bit how uh, this cat works. Isn't that right, sir? Okay, sir, it's time to move. I must at this time ask your compliance. Oop, didn't want to do that. There we go. That a boy. Let's get that out of here. Oh, he's in my lap, folks. Hang on a second. Too bad he can't stay there because he'll bite the phone, uh, the headphone cord. Well, maybe we could try it. Hang on. Got to reset the camera. All right, now we've got the camera on the real star. Let's continue with the game. Hang on. There he is. Okay. To get started, you'll probably need to find some peanut butter, some jelly, bread, a plate, and a knife. All right, let's approach Fru-Fru. Merlin, you'll have to help. Fru-Fru hisses as you draw near and remains firmly in place. You might want to talk to me, but I don't want to talk to you. Go away. That was that was not as good. But I don't want to talk to you. Go away. Yeah. It's been a long time since I met that lady. Anyway, uh, do you like living here? Do you know what's in the sealed off part of the estate? Can you tell me about Tabitha? Can you tell me about my aunt? Start with the small talk. So, do you like living here? I despise small talk. Can you tell me about her? Sorry. Well, what can you tell me about my cousin? This is the first time I've met her. Spare me your life story. Tabitha at least knows not to puzzle me. Can you tell me about Pearl Ann? I never knew my aunt. She's dead. I don't waste my time on corpses. If you want to take the hint, I suppose I'll have to take things into my own ends. Oh, pause. <laughs> Fru Fru lunges at your hand and bites you hard. You back away. Ow! No good. No bite. Merlin doesn't bite. He's a good boy. He only bites phone cords and headphone cords and the like. Which I now have to like. Carefully loop as far away as possible to keep him from... Ah! What we're gonna see. 
Oh, look at him. Look at him. All right. Let's search the pantry. Tabitha sure loves her macaroni and cheese. Oh, the the peanut butter is is, is GIF. We know what side of the debate they lie on. Um, but wow, yeah, not much in there except peanut butter and bread. And a, and a, and a mousetrap and a different dead mouse. Yikes. Look closer. You squint into the darkness of the pantry. Behind the molded bread, a single book lies forgotten, a thin layer of dust collected on its cover. You pick it up. You flip to a bookmarked page. Calf's brain aspic? Yikes. Teddy's favorite. Serve on toast or with plain crackers. Yikes. Both calf's brain and aspic are unappetizing enough on their own, and you can only imagine how vile the combination of the two would be. What kind of person would call this their favorite food? No wonder your mom ran far, far away from this place. Aspic can be okay. If you do it right. If you mix it in with your with your uh, transforming furikake rice in that one episode of Shokugeki no Soma. But anyway. You shut the book and put it back in its place. All right, let's take the bread. You pick up one of the non-moldy loaves of bread. Great, one step closer to a satisfying snack. All you need now is a plate, a knife, and the PB&J itself. Let's get that PB. The king of nut butters, and only 3% of each jar is mashed up cockroaches. Hey, that's, that's good protein is what that is. All you need now is some jelly, a plate, and a knife. Let's examine the mac and cheese. You pick up a box of Tabitha's mac and cheese. You can't say you've ever seen the brand before. It's knockoff. I see. Yeah. Ew, why would you... What are you, a little brother? In a sitcom? Put it back. Staying away from the mac and cheese was one of your cousin's hard rules, and she already seems to not like you. You put the box back where you found it, reluctant to make things worse than they already are. Close the pantry. Yeah, I'm getting I'm getting upset looking at those molded breads. You close the pantry door as best you can and turn back to the rest of the kitchen. All right, let's check the cabinets first. The cabinet must be where Tabitha keeps the dishware and, oddly enough, the utensils. Yeah, why not a drawer? It's not great for flow. Anyway, um, let's examine the mug. It reads, I was blown away at Blowing Rock, North Carolina. So your aunt and cousin actually traveled sometimes, even if it was only a few hours from the estate. Maybe you can route your return trip through Blowing Rock. It might be nice to see the local sites before heading home. Hey, what's up? You looking at? All right, you grab a plate and a butter knife. All you need now is some jelly. Examine the shot glass. It reads, I survived Deb's 50th. Your aunt's name was Perlan, so it wasn't from her 50th. From the few stories you'd heard about your mom, Perlan wasn't the type to have uh, kitschy friends uh, who gave out themed shot glasses at their birthday parties. Maybe it belongs to Janie. You imagine she might need an alcoholic beverage to get her through cleaning this place, especially with Tabitha's sour face peering over her shoulder. That's an interesting insight. Why would I grab a bowl? I don't want a bowl. You close the cabinet and look back to the rest of the kitchen. Let's check the fridge. As you approach the refrigerator, your eyes catch on a note taped to the door reading, Janie, stay out, in all caps. Below it, in separate handwriting, are the words, Okie dokie. Oh, I like Janie already. Um, you open the fridge. You already feel a deep urge to wash your hands, even though you have yet to touch anything other than the handle. I mean, that handle gets dirty. Uh, I don't want to examine the old takeout. Or the mayonnaise. Why would I do these things? I will take the jelly. 
You reach for one of the unopened jars of grape jelly, carefully checking its expiration date. You breathe a sigh of relief when you realize it's recent. This was either purchased specifically for you, or jelly is one of the few things in this kitchen Tabitha actually uses. This is the last ingredient you needed to make your PB&J. Time to close this fridge and get to work. And also, wash your hands, because you said you wanted to. You return to the kitchen, closing the fridge behind you. Where's the option to wash your hands? Make that sandwich. Despite the state of this horrendous kitchen, you have successfully combined your three ingredients to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Congratulations, you can feed yourself. Ta-da! Oh, I got an achievement called Cooking by the Book. A job well done. All of that hassle and it took you less than a minute to eat. The rest of the day lies in front of you. Again! Oh, hello, Artemisia. Nice to see you. Um, yes, thank you. Yes, Merwin is a cute kitty. I agree. That's why he's getting all the camera, sh uh, camera time right now. Uh, anyway, uh, I would like to meet a person who can eat an entire peanut butter jelly sandwich in less than a minute. That is terrifying. That is basically two bites. Um, anyway... I don't want to check out the garden right now, so let's get out of here. Congratulations, you've eaten and have a full day ahead of you. What do you want to do next? Let's settle into the room. Now that you've finally eaten, the aches and pains of your journey have started to sink deep into your bones. You stumble up the stairs to your room, suitcase in tow, eager to unwind before you face the rest of the day. You stand at the entrance to your room. Hey, if, if uh, Hana Pengu or Art of Mesia, can one of you tell uh, my lovely wife to tune into the stream quickly while Merwin is still on it? Because he's settling, but I don't know for how long. And I would do it, but he's on my phone, so. Uh, okay. Uh, not ready to take a nap, thank you. Let's put our spare clothes in the dresser. You drag your suitcase over to the dresser and open the bottom drawer. An opossum lurks within. It is quiet, but angry. Afraid! <sighs> I friend, I know her. Oh, what's your name, little guy? What are you doing in my drawers? Can you move, please? I was going to put my clothes in here. Can you tell me about the human rules here? Let's be friends. Hello, possum friend. I friend, I know her. Afraid! Oh, what's your name, little guy? I'm Johnny. Dustin. What are you doing in my drawers? Warm. Dark. Can you tell me about the human who lives here? Which human? Pro and died. Only one human lives here. Dustin, not good with names. Two human live here. Uh, okay, Dustin, can you tell me about the two humans who live here? One human sad, one human scary. Can you tell me about the sad human? Cries, Did, uh, gives Dustin bad sleeps. Can you tell me about the scary human? Always watches, eyes hateful. Never mind. Thanks for the help, Dustin. Okay. He says K. It's very cute. Uh, can you move, please? I would like to put my clothes in here. No, this Dustin house. Fashion your clothes into a nest. Hi. You poor thing. You look cold in there. You gently lay your clothes on top of the creature, arranging them in a little nest. Dustin closes his mouth, somewhat more at ease than before, and looks up at you with his shiny black eyes. Human is kind to Dustin. Dustin will remember this. For how long? That's the question. You close the drawer, satisfied with yourself for a job well done. Alright, let's check the closet. Oh, there's a creepy doll. 
All right, you can see why your cousin said you shouldn't put your clothes in the dresser. Uh, uh, said you should put your clothes in the dresser instead of this closet. There must be decades of family history stacked up in here, watched over by a creepy doll. Oh, don't pick up the creepy doll. Why? Of course you're Gary sharing the room with a creepy doll. You pick it up to examine it more closely. Its foot reads, Property of Alexandra. No need to carry this around with you. You close the closet behind you. Well, thank you very much, Artemisia. I appreciate it. Okay. Uh, let's look out the window. Ooh, pretty. You can only imagine how beautiful the garden must have been in its heyday. If you owned this place, you'd totally get out of there with a shovel and some gardening gloves and whip it into shape. Big talk from a not homeowner. All right, so the message definitely was sent then if both Hanapengo and Artemisia sent it. Good, good, good. You'd go out and pull weeds, chop trees, carve topiaries, and do whatever you needed to do to return it to its former glory. And once it was all done, you'd sit by the fountain, which, of course, would have a little goldfish in it, and drink a floral tea while enjoying the bird song. You can't see the face I'm making, but it's a skeptical face. Yeah, you definitely do that. Just not right now. Let's look at the painting. <laughs> this must be an old relative of yours. Very old, judging by the dates on the inscription. You've never heard of her, but you'd barely heard anything about your aunt and cousin until a week ago, so that's not really a surprise. Maybe you could ask Tabitha about this Mary Bell Scarlet the next time you see her. That is, if she's actually in the mood for conversation. I don't need to take a nap. It doesn't seem like there's much else for you to do here right now. Alright. If I'm playing it true to me, I would not investigate the Forbidden Wings of the Estate yet. But this is what saving is for. Okay. With time of the gun, there's no one stopping you from going into the forbidden wings of the estate. You immediately try the nearest door only to be impeded by locks and chains. Well, I guess that's that. Let's head to town. With your cousin gone, there's nothing left for you to really do here. You drop your bags off in your room and head out to explore the town. If you had known that you'd wind up having to walk all the way back to town, you probably would have just asked Tabitha to leave you at the bus stop, especially with how unhappy she seemed to see you. Oh, uh, who has the lockpicks? Uh, a different build of the character, the Streetwise character, has the lockpicks, and I did not go with that build this round. Uh, this version of the game, I played with the Keen Eye and Talk to Animals build. To answer your question, Artemisia. If only you could wipe the slate between the two of you clean and bury some of the tension. Though, maybe her mother's funeral isn't the best time for something like that. Do you think? Then again, maybe it's the perfect time. <laughs> Continue down the path. It's really pretty out here. Continue down the path. Finally, you made it back to town. The holler, as that guy on the bus called it. It's probably seen better days. Oh, Artemisia, you thought you were being facetious. Little did you know. Uh, anyway, it still has the feeling of an idyllic country town, but its sidewalks are cracked and many of the storefronts are boarded up. Their windows are dusty with age. It's feeling more and more like Possum Springs, I gotta say. Uh, a chill breeze sweeps down the lane and you shudder, suddenly feeling as if you're peering into a grave. Gretchen, come back! Quit bothering strangers! Oh, I, my southern bell is even worse than my French, but I will try. <laughs> why I do declare, who is this stranger, and why does he smell of peanut butter? Sorry about that. Gretchen can be very slippery when she wants to be. She loves to get loose and cause havoc. As much havoc as a pug can cause. It's nice to meet you, Gretchen. I'm Johnny. My, oh my, I can't remember the last time I met a newcomer who was so wonderfully polite. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance, Johnny. <laughs> That's a funny way to introduce yourself. I'm Stella. 
It's not often I see a strange face up in the holler. Every now and then there's a new crop of coal folks, but you don't look dusty enough for that. You aren't in town for the funeral, are you? The Scarlet funeral? I will introduce myself. Hi, I'm Johnny. You must be Tabby's cousin, right? Upon mention of your cousin, Gretchen mutters under her breath. One of these days, I'll give that Tabitha to pet me. That's the only person I can think of who would come down for the funeral. How's she holding up? To be honest, I've been a little worried about her all alone in that big house. It's tricky because I have to go back and forth between, like, regular modern-day Southern and, like, the Southern equivalent of heightened RP. Um, anyway. I don't think she's doing too well. She's been icy, sure, but it feels like she's putting that on as a front. She's always been a little rough around the edges. Uh, to be honest, it's always been hard to tell if that's just the way she is or if she's been putting on an act her whole life. It's a thing. She's been up at that old mansion all by herself. It'll probably be good for her now that you're staying there, even if she doesn't think so herself. Okay, I guess I only get one of these. Are you two friends? I was probably closer than most people have gotten to being able to call her a friend. The school here is really small, so everyone has to get along with everyone else. She was great ahead of me, but everyone knew her, especially since she's a scarlet. We wound up bonding a bit when we were both in the school's production of A Midsummer Night's Dream. Uh, Hannah Pengo, I respect that because uh, it is difficult to maintain non-excessive accents. Agreed. I mean, exaggeration is, is a lot of the fun. I'm going for akin to somewhere between Rogue from X-Men, which is very exaggerated, and uh, Alice from The Critic, who was played by Park Overall, who used her natural southern accent for it. Ooh, sorry, buddy. Didn't mean to hit your ear there. Um... We wound up, yeah, so it said this part, Midsummer Night's Dream. I was Puck and she was Mustard Seed. As you might have expected, she was more than a little prickly, but I managed to soften her up a little bit in the end. But then she graduated and now is that. I haven't seen that girl or her horrible little cat since I was middle-aged. Oh, sorry. I misread that. That's a Gretchen line. Here we go. Yeah, no, Merwin is, uh, is a very sleepy kitty and he wanted to snuggle up with Dad, so. Um, he'll get the zoomies around the time that I'm done, so that'll be fun. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, let me, let me take that line again as Gretchen. I haven't seen that girl or her horrible little cat since I was middle-aged. Oh, before it slips my mind, if you're staying up in that spooky old mansion, you must have met the Fru-Fru. How does that monster fare? Uh, I like I will pet her if it's the last thing I do, but I respect I respect Fru Fru's boundaries. Sounds like you and Fru Fru have a history. Wait, what? Are are you messing with me? You can't actually talk to my dog, right? Alas, you have discovered my dark and terrible secret. I can talk to animals and animals can talk to me. Your dog sounds like a southern belle when she talks. <laughs> yeah, of course you're joking. You and Stella maintain silent, awkward eye contact. Well, next time you see that devil, please send my regards. Oh shoot, sorry. Again, Gretchen line. <laughs> well, next time you see that devil, please send my regards. And do let her know that not only do I still draw breath, but that I very much still plan to outlive her. You're a pug. The odds are not in your favor. Um, <laughs> oh, if you just got to town, you must be starving. I was just on my way to the diner for a coffee, and they've gotten amazing biscuits. My treat. Heck yeah, let's do that. 
the pleasant aroma of greasy breakfast food hangs heavy in the air. In, con yeah, in contrast with the empty, lifeless atmosphere of the family estate, the diner is filled with a comforting din of human life. All of which grinds to a sudden halt as the patrons realize that a stranger has entered the establishment. And, you know, somehow they, uh, they're still using records on the jukebox and you hear the needle scratch as it lifts up and everyone stops and turns around. I'll be polite, since everyone's staring. Hey everyone, I'm Johnny, just in town for the funeral. Before anyone can respond, you and Stella casually slide into a booth, pretending the whole town didn't just gawk at you like a sideshow attraction. Looks like your entrance was a little more dramatic than you were expecting, huh? Folks around here don't meet many strangers as is, and with you who you're related to, well, let's just say you'll be the talk of the town for a while. As you settle into the booth, you can't help but pick up some of the murmurs of, of conversation around you. Stella turns to Gretchen while you take a quick look around the diner. At the counter, two policemen and a woman you assume to be the owner shoot sidelong glances in your direction while whispering to each other. Vivian's kid. Never thought we'd actually meet him. Looks so much like her. Oh yes, those eyes are unmistakable. That haunted look. I always thought it'd go away once she finally got out of this town, but I guess unhappiness was baked into her DNA. Mm. A young mother and her syrup-stained child sit at the table across from you. Mommy, who's that? Don't stare too lip, that's Miss Tabitha's cousin. Oh, so that's why he looks so sad. I would look sad too if I had to have Miss Tabitha as a cousin. Do you think Tabitha's cousin is mean, too? Hey, bud. I don't know. I'll find out the next time I go visit Miss Tabitha. Are you going to finish your pancakes? They're almost cold, sweet pea, and we've got to get home to help Daddy. In the far back corner, a man sits alone at a small table, sipping coffee and reading a paper. That is a very small town indeed, Artemisia. <sighs> Why are the strangers who wander into town never gorgeous blonde ladies of an appropriate age? Why is it always cowboys, punks, and whippersnappers? Man, thinking we still play Snap the Whip. Anyway, lastly, a group of coal miners sit hunched around the corner booth, readily scarfing down heaping plates of food. So that's the boss's cousin. There's that funeral this week, if I'm remembering, right? Bro, Miss Perlan? May she rot in peace. I'll let the dang lady rest, Lloyd. One shouldn't speak ill of the dead, no matter how foul they were. Especially before they've seen so much laid to rest. If you'd been around in her heyday, you'd be speaking ill too, Tommy. He's right, nastiest woman I've ever met. That Tabitha is a blessing compared to her. And cursed a whole lot of them, every scarlet burning hail. That's enough of that. Can you tell which King of the Hill characters I was doing for each one of those? Anyway. Hey Stella, I went ahead and fixed you up a coffee. They gracefully place a cup of specially brewed coffee in front of Stella. Oh shucks, thanks Avery. And here's some bacon for the little lady. For me? For me? Gretchen sniffs the bacon and digs in. Tim, you can hit the H button on your keyboard to, guide, uh, to hide the text box at any time. Oh, that's good for taking screenshots, probably. Hang on. Bop. Yeah! Oh, I see why they say to do that. Hang on, folks. You gotta see why they say to do that. Can I move this? Oop. Hang on. It's not the one I'm looking to move. No! What have I done? bet if I move this one. Yeah, then you can see it. Oh, look at that face. Okay. Could I have just hit it? Yeah, that would have been easier, but actually I could have just done bam. All right. Lesson learned. Anyway. Unhide. Hey, unhide. There we go. 
Isn't bacon bad for dogs? You deny me my pleasures? What is and isn't good for a lady's health is none of your business. Oh, camera's slightly misaligned. Hang on. It's a little too high. Hang on. I will fix. It's also a little bit too far to the right. Hang on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I think that's better. Maybe that'll do it? Okay. We'll try that. Back to the game. Okay. Gretchen's like one of those 110 year old ladies who've had a daily glass of wine her whole life. So why stop now? Maybe it's been the secret to her longevity. Hey man, George Burns lived to be 100 and he smoked cigars and drank scotch, so... Hmm. Oh good, thank you, Hana Pengu. Anyways, don't worry. I always keep an eye on her diet. And we make sure to only give her the leaner cuts. I gotta go in a sec. Want anything while I'm still here? How much is the coffee? A dollar, but that gets you unlimited refills. Yeah, let's do a coffee. Sweet, I'll have a cup, thanks. And could you throw in a biscuit too? I hear they're really good. Best in the county. Avery pours the fragrant brew into the empty mug in front of you. They linger after pouring your coffee, turning to you nervously. Oh, and I'm uh, sorry for your loss. Oh, I like the, the, is that a festive coffee cup out of Musia? It's very cute. Before you have the chance to respond, they're gone. Glad you took my advice with the biscuit. You won't regret it. Anyways, the funeral's not till Sunday, right? That gives you quite a bit of time to slum around town. I'm trying to think if there are any cool events going on this week. There's always the reading adventure at the library, which is supposed to be for little kids, but I do it every month anyway. Oh, and I'm pretty sure Avery's throwing a party Saturday night, so that's a fun thing to look forward to. And there's the weekly Sunday potluck. That should be right after the funeral, too, so it'll be a special occasion. Folks, I just winked when Stella winked, and then I remembered that the camera's not on me. It's on the real star. So. Is the potluck a church thing? Would it be weird for me to come if I'm not a member? No, 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 no. The Sunday thing is coincidental. It's actually hosted by the library. Um, not, not so many people go to church around here, if I'm being honest. That's a rude comment to make. Hang on. Um, I'll go with I get that. I get that. I'm not much of a church-going persuasion myself. Same for me. Yeah, Artemisia in the South, exactly. But I was like, you know what? Let's not be prejudiced. Whatever feeling some folks get in church, I think that must be the feeling I get when I look up at the sky on a night hike. That feeling of peace and wholeness. But that's not to say we're a town of heathens or anything like that. There are plenty of God-fearing folks around. They just aren't fans of the church. Well, the building's okay, but the pastor's another story. There's just something a little... Oh no, I'm aware. I'm aware that you have spent time in the South, Artemisia. There's just something a little off about the guy. You'll get what I mean if you ever meet him. But like specifically, this is North Carolina, I believe, which is a little bit less arch-religious in every area than other parts of the South, from what I know and what I've experienced, so. And unfortunately, you probably will. Anyway, those are all the big events I can think of. As for the day-to-day, -day, any idea on how you want to kill time for the rest of the week? Do you have something in mind? Something's telling me this is a loaded question and you've got something in mind. Yeah, cities and college towns is the parts that I have experience with in North Carolina, so that makes sense. Um, yeah. 
<laughs> was I being that obvious? My job means I spend a lot of time in the woods with a camera, and it's always better when someone else is there to... Before Stella can finish, Avery returns, biscuit in tow. Is there nothing else coming for me? Gosh, if I had known that plate of bacon would be my main and only course, I would have waited before digging in. Here's your biscuit. When he says it's on the house, she sends her condolences. Wink! Oh, you didn't have to do that. It looks great. No worries. I hope you enjoy it. You pick up the biscuit. It's delicate and fluffy. It nearly crumbles at your touch. Buttery warmth emanates from its surface. Ah, someday I will have southern biscuits again. I have only the dimmest memories of them from my youth. You take a bite. It melts in your mouth as if it was nothing but butter suspended in a thin matrix of dough. Truly, this is a perfect biscuit. What was the appropriate reaction there? Whoa, this is a really good biscuit. Wow. I'm so glad you like it. Avery lingers at the table for a moment. So, has Stella mentioned that she's famous? <laughs> oh, Avery, I'm not famous. Artemisia, I believe you that someday you will get the wheat you need for biscuits. I think you can order, like, Southern King Arthur flour from, like, special things online and stuff. But, um, anyway. Look, if you're not going to go around tooting your own horn, you know I'm going to do it for you. Stella sighs. I'm a YouTuber. What kind of videos do you do? She hunts cryptids. You should really check out her channel, Johnny. It's amazing. I think the best video to start with would be the river one. Not the lake, but, you know, the controversial one. Oh, yeah, the Catawba River Runner. I didn't expect much of that footage, uh, out of that footage at the time, but it wound up being my most popular video by far. So, the River Runner is a cryptid that's only known from a single sighting. Two Boy Scouts thought they saw something big and weird in the Catawba River. And that's all I had to go on. But then I wound up catching this on camera. Stella pulls out her phone and shows you a clip of something in a river. Despite the shaky camera footage, you can clearly make out the shape of the creature's head and its relative body proportions. You're pretty sure it's a cat, and a big one at that. Some folks said it was a beaver, but if that was the case, it'd be at least twice the size of any beaver I've seen. I also had people saying it was a dog or even a capybara that must have escaped from a local wildlife sanctuary. It was a mountain lion. Oh, sorry. Wrong. That's Fru-Fru. It was a mountain lion. I could smell its stink from miles away. I'm still not sure what it was, and I'm the only one who saw the thing with my own two eyes. Well, except for Gretchen. All I can use talk to animals to say it's a mountain lion or keen eye to say it looks like a big cat. I'll say keen eye looks like a big cat. It looks like a big cat. See, you can see the little kitty cat ears right there. Maybe, uh, maybe it's a mountain lion. Nah, no way. It's absolutely not a mountain lion. There are no mountain lions this far east. I did a whole video on the Appalachian mountain lion myth and found jack squat. And there's no reason one would be swimming in the river like this. They're not fans of water. And the body is too long. No way. Personally, I'm a fan of the capybara theory. Sure, it's not like any local sanctuaries were missing one, but there's always people keeping exotic animals as pets. Kind of a sewer gatory type situation. Ha <laughs> ha, exactly. Some exotic pet owner set it free and now it will forever roam the Catawba, confusing Boy Scouts and YouTube commenters for years to come. I'm just tilting slightly so you can see more of Merlin. So speaking of things to do around town, I was actually planning on filming this week's video tonight. 
I was wondering if maybe you'd want to come along? It's a pretty easy one this week. We wouldn't even have to camp anywhere. I'm gonna go after the... Wait, no spoilers. Whoops, sorry, Avery. It's okay, I should probably get back to it instead of standing around chatting with friends. See y'all around. Now that the coast is clear, I'm going after Skunk Ape. Isn't that just worse, Bigfoot? What a response that one is. I'm gonna go with what's Skunk Ape. What's a Skunk Ape? It's like Bigfoot, but smellier. Most skunk ape sightings are from Florida, but while I was doing research for last week's video, I came across a report where a lady from a town over claimed to have seen one on her deck, playing tug-of-war with her dog. And as I leave no stone unturned, I decided it was worth investigating. So what do you say, you want to tag along? Hold the camera for me while I narrate against the darkening sky, that sort of thing? Absolutely. I'd love to come along. That's great. It's been a while since I've had anyone besides Gretchen out here with me. This is going to be a lot of fun. I actually started the channel with a couple of buddies of mine back in middle school, so it's kind of like a blast from the past. I'm not sure who you mean by someone is flirty, because, like, I'm just bored. Uh, but anyway. If anything, I got a bigger flirtation vibe from Avery than from Stella. But anyway. Me and Kanika and Reese running around in the woods, flipping over rocks and bothering salamanders. Our videos were terrible, but we had a lot of fun and that's all that mattered to us. Oh, you think Stella's being a little flirty? Maybe. We'll see. You know, that gets me thinking. I wonder if they'd be down to come along with us, get the old game back together. Though I guess Kanika has to close out the general store tonight, so I'm pretty sure she's a no-go. Alright, thank you, Hanapengu. Uh, I thank you for backing me up. But Reese, I think there's a decent chance we could get him to come out of his hidey hole if he's up for it. Do you mind if I make a quick call? Stella pulls out her phone and dials it, waiting while it rings. Reese, dude, what's up? It feels like it's been forever. Oh man, I'm sorry to hear that. Do you want me to come by or... Okay, if you're really sure, but if you change your mind... Oh, I was just going to ask if you wanted to come out to the woods tonight. I met somebody cool in town today. He's Tabitha's cousin. I know, yeah, no, just here for the week. Anyway, we're going out to look for Skunk Ape. We could take the easier trails if that would help. Dang, man, that sounds awful. I hope you take it easy tonight. I'll swing by sometime this week and we can have a more low-key hang. How's that? <laughs> yeah, I'll bring him. Talk to you soon. Bye, bud. Reese. I'm oh, sorry. Reese, there's always been something off about that boy. I never did like the smell of him. Looks like it's just you and me, pal. Yeah, did he ask you to bring me to the house? Why? He's excited to meet you, of course. I think you'll find most folks in town are. Is he okay? He's not feeling well, that's all. He's had a lot going on in the past, gosh, been 10 years or so, but I feel like it's gotten a lot worse recently. I can't remember the last time I saw him leave his house. Oh, well, it's not my place to talk about, really. Ah! Hang on a second. I just got a little excited thinking about having him along again. He's hilarious. You'd love him. The, the... Image of Stella sipping them from the coffee mug while saying it's not my place to talk about really is just a perfect um, uh, Kermit sipping the, the Lipton tea saying, but that's none of my business meme in action. We should swing by his place sometime this week. We'll see. I don't know how much I should commit to doing this week. That's fair, but if you have the time, I'd, he'd love to meet you, and I think you'd get along. But we can talk about making friendship plans later. For now, we've got a skunk ape to hunt. It's a very southern behavior. All right. So we should probably head out if we want to make it up the mountain before it's too dark. 
Come on, let's blow this popsicle stand. <laughs> you pause before getting up. Maybe it's time to make a good first impression. Oh yeah, no, uh, Art of Mesia, I'm aware. It, it, it originally comes from, um, like, southern black women after church, like, gossiping, right? Pretty sure. That's where that, but that's none of my business comes from. I mean, and then the Kermit thing is, yeah, anyway. Um, I will leave a tip. You reach into your pockets and pull out a single crumbled dollar bill and a quarter. As long as you don't get sick of peanut butter and jelly, your meals will be free while you're here. Share the wealth while you've got it, you think to yourself. You leave the money on the table and follow Stella out of the diner. I wonder what would have happened if I had tried to leave a generous tip. It hadn't been very cold when you first arrived in town, but as the sun dips closer and closer to the horizon, a chill descends upon the hollow, and you see your situation with renewed clarity. You're in a new place, far from civilization and the people you know, following someone you just met in a dark forest in search of monsters. You feel... Yeah, it's going more alive than you've been in years. It's exciting. You feel alive. The fall breeze passing through the leaves, the orange hue of the setting sun painting the horizon, the promise of excitement ahead. It's been a while since you felt this in the moment, this present. The world around you feels almost magical. Were a mythical creature to actually manifest in front of you, it would fit perfectly in this world. Yes, Merlin? Are you a mythical creature? The boy demands scritches. I shall give him a few and then go back to the game. You make a good point. His name is Merlin. If he's like his namesake, then he is mythical. And it could be true. We don't know. Oh, are you up? Or are you settling? All right, Loaf, back to settling. Eh, harder to get this angle now, but I guess that'll do. Okay. Gotta, <laughs> gotta love this brisk fall weather. This past summer was the hottest on record, since last year at least. You know how it is these days. Each summer is the hottest yet until the next summer, which always finds a way to be so much worse. It's just nice to feel a chill in the air and see the leaves change, like normalcy is restored, if only for a moment. Sorry if that was a bit of a bummer. We should talk about something more fun, like skunk apes. Are you really expecting to find anything out here? What are the chances we actually run into a skunk ape in just one night of filming? Yes, indeed, Art of Mesia, the real monster is climate change, which means the real monster is man, but we'll get there, I'm sure. That's fair. We are hunting a creature that stayed hidden from humans long enough to gain a mythic reputation. What are the odds of something like that popping out to star on my little YouTube channel? But hey, the chances are never zero, right? Has anything bad ever happened on one of these hikes? You know, I'm just curious. Uh, let me think. There was a time back in early high school where Reese fell down a cliff. But he was fine. We had some folks in town rig up a pulley to get him out of the ravine, and his leg only took a couple of months to heal. All in all, not too bad. Though I guess there was also that time I was out here alone and kind of got stuck in a cave. I was getting great footage of what I thought was a family of wampus cats, but I wasn't able to rig them my way back out. Turns out that the Wampus Cats were actually skunks who very much did not appreciate me blocking the entrance to their hidey hole. Art of Mesia, I can't tell what the ellipsis is for, but anyway. Uh, and instead of running for help, Gretchen just sat outside, bored to tears. Lassie, she ain't. As if. 
I made sure to give those nasty little skunks a piece of my mind. That's what I did. And I kept Stella company just as she would for me if I decided to hide in a hole for hours. It took about an hour to get loose, which was pretty... Uh, oh, sorry. Wrong character. It took about an hour to get loose, which was pretty intense, but a few tomato juice baths later on was right as rain, so it could have been a lot worse. Only took a few months to heal. I mean, like, isn't that normal for a broken leg that it takes like two months or something? I'm not sure. The point is he survived without permanent damage. But anyway. Oh, and there was the time I accidentally stumbled onto old Duke's property and nearly got my head shot off. Oh yeah, well, yeah, a little downplaying, but I mean, you know, again, it was really a question of has anything anybody ever suffered permanent harm, I think, and the answer is no. But that happens to everybody sooner or later, I'd barely count it. So yeah, these hikes aren't all that dangerous, all things considered. You ever hunt things that aren't cryptids? Like, you know, ghosts, demons, werewolves, that sort of thing? I mean, werewolves kind of... I mean, ah, whatever. Anyway. Uh, yeah, for sure. I used to go after all sorts of spooky stuff. Never had much luck, though. Especially when it came to ghosts. Back when I first started doing solo videos, I'd go into all sorts of old abandoned buildings, hoping I'd stumble across some sort of activity. Yes, it would be very good to have, uh... Um... Hanapengu doing voices for animal characters. I think that's Hanapengu's way of saying that she does a better Southern Belle than I do, which is accurate, but, you know, this thing is a little... But nothing ever happened. It was always just me and my camera in an old house getting worked up over a gust of wind or a creaky floorboard, as it always is. Uh, Merlin has moved. He is out of the shot right now, so it's back to me for just a moment or two. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, when all's said and done, I've just been a lot luckier with cryptids. I want to believe in ghosts so bad, and I can't rule out the possibility that there really are true hauntings out there, but if there are, I sure as heck haven't seen any myself. Werewolves I kind of lump in with cryptids, thank you, me too. I'd be shocked if there actually were people out there who turned into animals, but werewolf lore lines up, uh, lines up pretty well with the great beast genre of cryptid. Genre. Funny word to say in a southern accent, but anyway. As for demons, I don't know. I honestly don't even want to consider the possibility that they exist, because if they really are out there, geez, a lot of folks are doomed to an eternity of flames. So let's hope all that's just bunk, am I right? What about aliens? Don't even get me started. Did you see those UFO videos the government declassified? Aliens are definitely real, and they have absolutely visited Earth. Like, I believe in aliens way more than I believe in cryptids. I adore... Listen, wrong character. I adore my darling Stella, but she gets the strangest ideas in her head these days. Ever since her parents went away, she's been more and more foolhardy with all this critter nonsense. Oh, gotcha. Hanapengu, yes, making the transitions easier, it's true, it would be. Uh, but every once in a while I would still miss the thing, but anyway. Yes. Uh, you don't see me hunting aliens out here because we know they're real. Uh, God, I love that. See, that's just what the government wants you to think. Yeah, throw the double bluff. See, that's just what the government wants you to think. It's easier for them to cover up their secret research programs if they trick everyone to thinking that aliens are behind the abductions and the UFO sightings and all of that weird stuff. You don't think the moon is real, do you? Sure, the government does messed up stuff on the daily, but the way I see it, I have about as much control over them as I would over extraterrestrial beings. So if I have no control over these things, I might as well choose to think it's been aliens all this time and let a little joy into my heart, you know? 
Besides, it's not like it matters which of us is right or if either of us is right at all. Ah, okay. Thank you for the tip, Hanapengu. Yes, I don't want to go much uh, past midnight, so I will stop at the trail mix scene. Thank you for the for the advice from a seasoned player of this game. I'll die one day and so will you, and eventually there'll be no one left who remembers us or what we did in our lifetimes. Oh, Merwin's pawing at the screen. <laughs> don't try to disarm me with your nihilism. <laughs> Looks like I already did. Good, uh, okay, so I can also step just before or after the convo with Duke. Good to know. Hang on. Okay. <laughs> Merlin is trying to choose the option that says, are you sure it's safe? I'm sorry, did you say you almost got shot? Are you sure it's safe out here? You know, I'm a little surprised to see you getting cold feet. I know we just met, but I had you painted as pretty adventurous. I really wouldn't worry about Duke, though. He might be a little jumpy, but he means well, and these trails are a ways off from his farm. Duke is a sweetheart, Johnny. You needn't be concerned about him. And if it makes you feel any better, I've been out on the trails with him before. The man sounds like a truck crashing through the woods when he walks. You'll, we'll hear him long before he sees us. Here we go. That's funny. Mirrored. And the wildlife isn't anything to be afraid of either. The worst I've seen up here is the occasional black bear, and even they scare easy. But hey, there's no point in worrying about whatever bad stuff may happen to us. Sure, sometimes worrying can help you prepare for something, but we're as prepared as can be. I even carry bear mace. Bear mace, which is, I found out is weaker than human mace. It just propels at a further distance. Merwin is on top of the vent to my desktop right now. Oh, and he's in his carrier. That's wild. He doesn't go in there very often. But anyway. Uh, and if you're as prepared as you can be, why give in to your anxiety when you can have fun instead? <sighs> it's not like being anxious ever stops anything bad from happening. In my experience, all it does is make the bad thing worse. I don't have therapy again for another many hours. I didn't need this game. <laughs> the only thing you can do is tell yourself, this has happened. There's no going back to before this bad thing happened. And then you work on making things better. Excuse me as I screenshot that for next week's therapy session. All right. Uh, anyway, all this is to say we're good. Don't worry. Did you hear that? Alright. Gotta get a voice for, for Duke here. Oh, calm down, Gretchen, you old mutt. Oh, Duke, you rascal. Same to you, Stella. You're always jumping at nothing, girl. Phew, sorry for getting spooked, Duke. I thought you were... Some creature of darkness? Nah, girly, just old Duke. Now what the hell are you looking for way out here? Skunk Ape? Sorry, I asked. And who's this you suckered into coming with you? Wait a tick. You aren't... Is it? Yep. I see. Welcome to the holler. Oh. Pff. You alright, buddy? That was not your most graceful exit. You going down into the lower cubby? You'll figure it out. Anyway. My condolences. I'll keep you in my prayers. Now both of y'all head on back to town, you hear? It's best you steer well clear of this area tonight. 
I'm out dealing with my own critter and won't be too appreciative if a couple fools with a camera scare away the most sensitive wildlife. <laughs> are we sure he's not a cryptid? Good one, Artemisia. I like it. What are you hunting tonight? Something tall and hairy. Oh, sir. Wrong, wrong name. Something tall and hairy? Something musky? Seen anyone that recently? Wouldn't you like to know? You never could stay in your business, Stella Richmond. Put that damned camera down. Oh, come on, dude. Maybe I can help out. I'm pretty good at tracking. You know, I learned from the best. That you did. But I have yet to see a shred of proof that you listened to any of it. The way you tromp around the woods at night, yelling, yelling about chunkabungas or what have you. Something's been getting at my chickens. I've lost three this week and can't afford to lose many more than that. I'm so sorry to hear that. But, um, I wonder if Skunk Ape has a taste for chicken. Now see, this is why I don't come to you about these things. It ain't no Skunk Ape, whatever the hell that is. I know exactly what this is, but I know you won't believe me if I tell you. Oh, dude, you don't think it's... I do, actually. It's those damned mountain lions. They're out there, Stella. I don't care what your little investigation turned up or didn't. You haven't been out in these woods as long as I have. Those sons of bitches are sneaky. Of course, you wouldn't find any in one night of tracking. And I know for a fact... That what's been, that's what's been getting at my chickens. It couldn't be anything else. I'm telling you, man, mountain lions are extinct in these parts. There hasn't been an actual sign since the 1990s. And even those were iffy. It's true. There are mountain lions out here, sure as sin. They pee on all the best trees. I can't believe you'd go out there on your YouTube saying some river monster spotted by a couple of school-age boy scouts has been 100% confirmed, yet Appalachian cougars are some kind of far-fetched fantasy made up by geezers like me. You made me look like a fool. I read those comments people were posting on your video. They were calling me all kinds of names just for seeing things with my own eyes that I know to be true. I'm sorry, Duke. I didn't mean to sick anybody on you. I just don't think it's plausible. You'll eat those words when I come carrying a mountain lion corpse out of those woods at dawn. And if you two don't want a face full of buckshot, I suggest you run home and stay out of the woods tonight. We were here first. Not the right argument to make, but let's see here. If you find a mountain lion, don't kill it. Can't you just buy more chickens? Honestly, I don't like any of these options. I'm gonna not butt in. You stand awkwardly by as the two continue to argue. Duke, you're just wasting your time. Give us just one night out here to see what we can find, and I'm sure we can get to the bottom of this. <coughs> oh, hang on. Something's happening. Uh, got a BRB on the stream, folks. Hang on. And we're back. Sorry about that. Okay, so let's finish this uh, this dialogue up, and then we will save, and then that'll be it for the night. 
Yeah, right. You'll get some shaky footage of a raccoon and then claim it's heretofore unknown creature that has heat ray vision or some such nonsense. I know what I'm looking for, and there's no way I'm backing down. But I've got a film. But I've got a film tonight. This video needs to be out by tomorrow evening so I can keep on schedule. If I miss an update, I might lose my new sponsor, and who knows what that'll mean for my career. You ain't the only one on a schedule. As you well know, my boy Bo and me are headed down to the state fair to show off Big Betty tomorrow morning. We'll be gone near a whole week, so our chicken coop might as well have a big all-you-can-eat sign on it. You know how I feel about my chickens. I couldn't take it if I lost any more of my poor little ladies. That's kind of sweet. <laughs> this is too much pressure. That's cute. I like it. This is too much pressure. I'm stressed enough as it is. I need to go take it easy tonight, I think. You turn away before either has a chance to stop you and begin the trek back to town. Alright, so now we save. Okay. Alright, we're calling it there. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, so we have saved, and now we are about to quit. Uh, Merlin just exited the room. He is in the living room right now uh, in Water Rit. So uh, I am going to sign off now, and I will catch all of you lovely folks uh, next week for more Sunday Scaries, hopefully, and tomorrow night for Ring Fit. So good night, Hanapengu. Good night, Art of Mesia. Uh, good night in Water Rit. Good night, anybody watching uh, who was not in the chat. And good night to anybody who is watching on the VOD to see those great shots of Merlin. All right. Take care, everybody.